The Girl Who Didn't Want to Be, by Frederick Bradnam, with Simon Cadell, Joanna David, Christopher Benjamin, and Angela Pleasance. I do wish they'd do their practice with handbells and at the other end of the village. Can't, can they, though? Dong, dong, I go on too long. If I was a poet, I'd write a nice poem called Summer Evening in the Chancel. Well, probably Betjeman already has. It starts, The vicar's wife was arranging flowers and thinking of her suburban girlhood. Was I? Oh, Lord, somebody come to see. Is Tim there? Well, I hope not, because he can be ours and I'm getting hungry. Sneak a look. Oh, he's there. A lone visitor, not a coach load. Oh, thank you, Lord. Good-looking old chap. Tanned by a son not English. Looking at the crowns with scrutiny. Inquiry, yes. Now he's found the one he wants, I'm sure. Oh, here cometh Tim. Now, don't be long, please, Reverend Timothy Turner. Good evening. Ed, Ed, do you know about the crowns up there? Hmm? Virgin crowns. Uh, unique to this church, you know. People come from far and wide to see them. If a person is born, baptised and dies in the parish, above the age of puberty, the 14, actually, and is a virgin, then the next of kin can ask for a virgin crown. Or with a sort of calling of the band, so that if anyone wants to object, they can. <laughs> to the giving of the crown, that is. When granted, the crown is placed high on the nave wall, as you can see, with, with, with the details beneath it. <laughs> There's a short ceremony and... Uh, that the big... one. Hmm? I knew her. She shouldn't be up there. Hmm. Good evening, Vicar. Ah. Uh, good, good evening. Extraordinary fellow. I was listening. No, he had it done. Well, which crown did he mean? No, he, he pointed to that one. Margaret Joan Bell, 1920 to 1938. We've always said, haven't we, that there are some up there who probably ought not to be. She was 18. I suppose that some girls were promiscuous in 1938. I mean, at her age. Oh, for sure, darling, as in 1838. Well, some girls are always. Yes. It is mentioned in the Bible. Mm. Margaret Joan Bell, 1920 to 1938. Short life, so long ago. Within living memory. Mm. I wonder how she died. Perhaps our verger would know. A lot of what Harold Thorpe knows he keeps to himself, as you well know. <laughs> I think he finds me too young to be a vicar. Well, at 32 you are. You wait until you reach 30, wife. Then you'll know how age suddenly descends. Actually, old Harold is giving out a bit now. We've done nothing terrible and been here a year, so he's prepared to accept it. He's accepted me? Oh, oh yes, he has, and it's not easy to see, but he has. I know, I know. You can be very nice and sexy. <laughs> I'm hungry. Let's leave the bell thrashers to lock up and, uh, and go and feed our faces, hmm? Nice today, Vicar. Mm. Getting dark. Still warm, though. You staying? Yeah, for a moment, Harold. Yeah. Good place to think in as a church. For a clergyman, it is. Do I look as if I want to think? Brood on something, anyway. Huh. Uh, how many visited us today? There's five names in the book. A couple of days ago, there was a man who didn't put his name in. Mm, well, some don't want to, some forget, and some can't write. <laughs> I'll leave you to lock up then, Vicar. Good night to you. Uh, good night, Harold. Father, hear me. What is it? I mean, this is my calling. I, I'm contented. I have a wife I love who loves me. Fine church, interesting parish, beautiful countryside. Or is it all too cushy? This last week, my soul's been troubled. I, I haven't a clue. I have searched to find. There's a, there's a restlessness. I wake at dawn feeling as if something has to be done or, or something is wrong in the doing. 
Hello? Who's that? Hello? Hello? Um, I'll, I'll put the lights on. Um, I'm, I'm here. Do you see me now? <laughs> Where the Lord are you? Well, I'm here. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Now look, listen. I mean, whoever you are and, and wherever you are, please stop playing this silly game. Hello? Christ! Hello? I'm sorry. Excuse me. Oh. What do you want? <laughs> Hello and goodbye. Well, I, I think this is some sort of trick. Well, go on. If you... How did you get in? And if you've gone, how did you get out? Hello? Hello? Oh? Are you there? Not a dicky bird. No, there was no one anywhere, Pam. No, not a dicky bird. Anywhere. And all she said was hello? Mm, that's all. From the rafters at one moment, behind my back the next. Hello. I'm going to open another bottle of wine. My nerves are not what they were. You hadn't been at the communion wine before, had you? Or at the pubs? Strong ale. Now, the communion wine, you need to lace with LSD. Ah. Now I come to think of it, it was exactly like an hallucination. Voice in the head. Perhaps I'm on my way to a sainthood. Cheers. With an awful long way to go, and you might pour me a glass. Oh, I'm sorry. I wonder if I can levitate or something. Huh? Hmm? Or something. Hmm. Well, somebody was playing a trick. Mm, I know. A nasty, dirty trick. I don't know why, do you? Oh, it's for luck. I wonder how. <coughs> Tomorrow I'll look for the wires. Wires? Oh, you mean live speakers hidden away? Oh, something like it. Must be. Have a word with Harold also. No, it doesn't sound like a Harold trick. Mm, ha ha. That he'd know about the wiring, wouldn't he? As the virgin. I suppose he would. Ask him also if he knew the bell girl. Bell girl? Was she of the virgin crown, Margaret Joan? Hmm, yes, an idea. I hope he wasn't one of her chaps. Ask him, tactful like. Did you have a Harold? <laughs> I will, shall. You know me. I think I want my bed. Oh, poor darling. Up you go. I'll join you in a sec. Mm. All she would say was hello. Not even hello, vicar. Hello, sailor. I think you'd better go to bed. <laughs> Morning, Mr. Turner. Fine day. Morning, Harold. And what birdie is that, for heaven's sake? It's a blue crow, Vicar. A roller. Pretty rare immigrant. Not a nice voice, though, is it? It goes through you, don't it? Yes. Friendly chap. Um, talking of friends, a man was in the church the other day, a visitor, who seemed to have been a, a friend of one of the virgin crowns. Was he? He said he knew her. She died in 1938. Margaret Joan Bell. Behind you. What? That's her grave. Oh, okay. I'll tidy it this week. Her family left soon after she was put down, and then the war. Our beloved daughter, who will always remain a pure younger. I really must get to know the tombstones, you know, Harold. I shouldn't bother, Vicar. They're a dreary lot. Nothing mytho-poetic or vulgarian come to that. Oh, I see. Well... Well, <laughs> you can't expect everything, huh? Uh, the, the chap who knew the bell girl seemed to suggest that um, her virgin crown was a sort of uh, false pretenses. Did he know? I haven't heard things about him. Not for years, obviously. Her family didn't like the talk. So they, they packed their bags. I, I take it that nobody objected to the crown at the time. There wasn't a dicky bird, Vicar. Now I'd best be getting on with things. Yes. One thing, has the church ever been wired for loudspeakers? No. No reason. 
It was rewired for the usual electrics in 1961. Well, don't, don't worry, I'm not thinking of using those speakers. Eh? Uh, uh, the, the insurance wanted to know, that's all. Mm. Well, the insurance wants to know more than is good for them at times. You going in the church now, Vicar? Uh, no, I'll be on my rounds. I'll have a look in the church later this evening. Uh, for, for the insurance. Uh, leave the ladder there, will you? Right. Here you go, my lad. Perhaps this mucking around in an empty church can go to the head. I talk aloud to myself already, quite happily. The last vicar was balmy. Here we are. Hmm. No sign of wiring or speakers anywhere. Not a dicky bird. I must stop saying dicky bird. Was Harold using it sarcastically? Probably. And did he believe the lie about the insurance? No. No, I'm a bad liar, which, after all, in my profession is a recommendation. Better get down. No. No, I'll stay up here and wait. Above the crowns, underneath the rafters. <laughs> Who would think of looking for a vicar up here, even a balmy one? Now, come on, girl. It's almost exactly the same time that you said a hello a week ago. And from here, I'll see how you get in. It's quite a decent view over the water. I must see the road. I suppose Harold gets up here quite often. Clean windows. Come on, girl. Not a dicky. Nothing. No sir. A motorcycle. Much too fast. That's what the hell of a dicky. It's going to crash. Oh, God! God, quickly as that. Really, hurt. Oh, God. I'm on my way! I must have been on the pillion. Chat was driving. Perhaps she was driving her. Where are they? What the... Where was it? We must have been here, huh? Master! It's not a dicky bit. Nothing. Quiet. Well, oh, here comes a car. Well, that was real enough. From the same direction. From the village downhill, round this bend and away. It's another little trick. Another blasted trick! Why a crashing motorbike? Oh, and I'm in bed before you for once. I feel exhausted. I feel troubled. Since a bit before the hello, boys. Um, I've noticed you've been awake at dawn recently, looking wide awake, but before I could do anything about it, I was back in the land of Nod. The thing is, I can find no reason for being troubled. More restless than troubled. Only the restlessness is troubling. Well, somebody or something's working on you. What do you mean by that? Do you know, I really don't know. Words came out suddenly, instinctive. It's all connected, the hello girl and the phantom crash. You're being troubled and restless. Yeah, all right, I'll buy that. Cause and effect. Only why the cause? Darling, hmm? you're just about to put your left leg into your pyjama jacket sleeve. Right? Oh, yes. Oh, I thought the legs for sure. No, not my legs. Pyjama legs. Probably my mind's going. As I said before, I'm hearing things in the head. After all, nobody else has heard any of this. Not a... Not a sound. Well, you're a bit young to grow mad as a clergyman, aren't you? Noises in the head, Tim. I usually pretty silly random things connected somehow to the person experiencing them. Well, they are, aren't they? Or have you had girls saying hello and motorbike crashes with a girl screaming tucked down in your subconscious somewhere since a boy? <laughs> Hardly, darling. I suppose we can exclude the possibility of the supernatural. Well, for the moment, yes. For the moment? Well, until we've ruled out the dirty tricks, simulated hauntings. Yes. Now, why a crashing bike? I mean, girl's voice is OK, ghost stuff, but a crashing bike is sheer fantasy. Well, because perhaps there was one once, a real bike crash. Mm -hmm. Not unlikely. Oh! You might have warmed this side of the bed. The night is very warm, sir. <laughs> Church was cold. That bike sounded odd, I thought. Mm. There, but it could be just 
It was a sort of noise motorbikes no longer make. Once there was a crash, and the story got around that on certain summer nights the crash could be heard. So some joker puts it all on tape and, I can't think why, plays it out to keep the tail going. Why? Well, have some fun at the expense of those of a religious disposition. Attack the church's foundations. Church with a capital C. Send the young vicar batty. Are there people concerned enough with the presence of the church to do that? I mean, here and now. Well, there's said to be a middle-class black magic crowd at under Woolston, only five miles away. <laughs> yes, I've heard. They go in for... They go in for orgies around bonfires. One of them burnt his private stock hunter dome. <laughs> then maybe they're doing something less dangerous, like simulating ghost sounds. Well, if they are, I'll do something even nastier to their privates than a fire can. But I, I tell you what. What? I'll have a word with old Harold about village hauntings. You didn't get much out of him about the bell girl, did you? So I bet he doesn't give out on hauntings. Extraordinary old chap. Did I tell you, he doesn't think the village mythopoetic or vulgarian enough to write interesting tombstones. I'm not surprised. He explained to me the other day why television and film never gets Thomas Hardy right. Oh. Well, it made sense. Perhaps he's the brains behind the whole thing. <laughs> what? Ah, oh, Harold. <laughs> Evening, Padre. Evening, Sam. Mrs. Sam. Oh, evening, Vicar. Oh, you should bring the wife in for a drink, Vicar. Yeah, I should, but then I, I do. It does you know, good I when they're young, a drop of drink does it. Makes them bloody loquacious when they're old, it does. Loquay? Ooh, I've never been the worst for a vicar, whatever he says. Silly yeah, no. cow, that's inebriated. Talking him not drunk. Ah, uh, swallowed a crossword, he had. I'll, I'll have a pint of best bitter, Mr. Orford, please. Well, the best's a bit cloudy. Uh, try it if you like, but it'll be better in the morning. I'd have a bottle if I were you, Vicar. Ah, Harold, <laughs> um, well, a light ale then, Mr. Orford. Light ale? No, that should be all right. Of course, you can't be sure. That's uh, 20 pence to you, Vicar. Uh, uh, your glass is all but empty, Harold. Ah, it's a stout, thank you, Mr. Turner. I never know now I'll drink anything but stout, except brandy. On high days and holidays, when I feel like it. Are oh, you getting to know us all, Mr. Turner? Nice lot, aren't we, eh? <laughs> yes, yes, jolly nice, yeah. yes. Uh, what do I owe you, Mr. Orford? We're hardly inscrutable, are we? Well, uh, 42 pence, sir. Can't make it any less. Never can, can you? You're more insalubrious than inscrutable, Sam. I've got the right amount, eh? Uh, hope it didn't come from the operatory box, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a health, sir. And yours, Harold. Mm. I taught Sam all the words he knows, other than the four-letter ones. And he still works on the corporation rubbish dump. <laughs> Work? He's the flipping foreman. <laughs> Get your facts right, Ernie. Supervisor of the Rural District Refuse and Disposal, Central Plant. Sam, Sam, the refuse man. Ah, yeah. I'll treat your scurrility with the contempt it warrants. Get us another drink, will you? <sighs> If you want a quiet drink, you won't get it in this pub. I know. Came, came looking for you, actually. Uh, had a silly question to ask. Oh, do you expect a silly answer, then? <laughs> Possibly, probably. Um, are there many stories of, of any substance of, of hauntings of any sort in the village? Oh, Well, uh, old Charlie Kicks swears his dead old Labrador still walks his garden. There's said to be a man dressed in black robes who walks Church Lane at dusk, last seen ten years ago by Mrs. Jarman with a bottle of gin in her. There does the vicar know the story of Mrs. Jarman's resurrection, Harold? Ah, big ears. Do you, vicar? <laughs> no, no, I'm sure I don't. Ah, she's no longer with us. Not dead. She's living in Spain. Her husband was Colonel Jarman. He used to describe himself as Colonel Jarman of England. <laughs> it was meant to be a joke. He's dead, but when he was alive, he and she drank heavily, and when taken by the drink, quarrelled like Irish tinkers. Sometimes they shut one another out of the house. He'd sleep in the old stables, and she'd go to the church. We left it unlocked in those days, or she'd wake up one of her friends for a bed. So, one summer night, when he'd managed to lock her out, she went to the church. 
The church was being painted at that time, so the dust covers were over everything. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> that doesn't stop Mabel Jarman, though. She gets right under a dust cover on the front pew by the pulpit and sleeps. <laughs> Come eight in the morning and three painters and decorators arrive. They're not village men from town they were, Jack. Well, remember. <laughs> well, not so long ago, was it? But they're not bright, and that morning they weren't so bright neither. <laughs> They see what looks like a corpse under one of their dust sheets, and they reckon this is a bit impertinent. <laughs> but the vicar, your predecessor, he was a man used to his own way and notoriously forgetful. <laughs> so they start moving things around, and of course they wake the colonel's lady. <laughs> Jack Flower was the one who saw it first, halfway up his ladder. The corpse pushed the sheet off and sat up and bowed. <laughs> uh, that was Mrs. Jarman's resurrection. Yeah, the three of them came running down here and I told them who she was, but they had to have a drink before they go back. <laughs> <laughs> I do like that. <laughs> uh, but seriously, Harold, ready for is, is there a real haunting? Uh, it's something, something contemporary, I suppose, is the way to put it. Ooh. Makes a lot of noise. Yes, there is. Some people claim to have heard a motorbike crashing. Yeah. And a girl screaming? Yes, so I'm told. Heard but not seen. Has it got to your ears, Vicar? I heard something of it. I just, just wondered. Really. Yes, yes, you would. Well, it's more likely than the bloke in black robes, who was actually the old schoolmaster, mad as a hatter out in his gown. <laughs> well, let me get you another, Mr. Turner. Thank you very much, Mrs. Fry. Oh, oh, Mrs. Yes. Kick. Oh, yes. Mrs. Nightingale. Uh, but they do look nice always, don't they? No, the first real flowers of summer. They do look nice. Oh, she's terrible deaf. Yes. Your husband plays the organ real well, Mrs. Turner. Yes, he does, doesn't he? Although I don't tell him so. No, no. it doesn't do him, then. Now, come on, ladies. Oh. Uh, uh, good night to you, Mrs. Turner. Say good night to the vicar for us. Good night, Mrs. Turner. Say good night to Mr. Turner, won't you? I will. Well, good night, ladies, and thank you for your help. As you heard, they've gone. They seem to think you played very well. <laughs> Not Mrs. Nightingale, I hope. She's as deaf as a post. And with that name. Look what they've done for your church. Hmm. Seven vases of flowers. Aren't you impressed? <laughs> yes, yes, yeah, yes, very. They're nice old bags. Tim? Hmm? Oh, never mind. Never mind? All right. Come on, let's go. It's becoming distinctly chilly in here. Well, that's what I meant. In the last half minute, it's turned cold. <laughs> well, it's these early summer evenings. Not to be trusted, so they tell me. Now, come on. Well, it was warm at the door when the ladies left a moment ago. Still is, strangely. Tim, shut the door. But I just... Uh, what is that? I wondered if it was me seeing things. Whatever it is, it's... It's beneath Margaret Jernbell's crown. Sort of cloud. It's drifting down to that pew. It's becoming a shape. Well, I'm not frightened. Really, I'm not. I am. It's settled. It's like somebody under a white sack. It's a very I mean, it's a dirty trick, very clever. Will it answer? Hello? 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 <laughs> what is this? Now tell me who you are, please. Hello? Hello? Don't go too near Tim. Not bloody likely. I'm Tim, and this is Pam. Who are you? Pam? Pam? You call Ted? Oh, this is Potty. No. Well, why are you here? Going out. Ted. Pim. Ted temper. It's not a trick, Tim. Ted was in a temper. Too fast. Too fast. He, he, go away. When was this? When in time? Time? No. Summer. Start. 
Evening. And now is 1976. When is your now? Oh, really? There you are. Well, is it 1938? Card. 18. Against. Uh... Oh, my. Knew what? Mummy, where? Oh, Lord. Oh, Were you once Margaret Joan Bell? Might be Bell go to hell. Bad. Don't care. No. Not in hell, Maggie. On earth still. Some part of you is. Can you hear us? Understand us, Maggie? No, for a long time. Why? No voices. That's your virgin crown up there, Maggie. No bloody virgin. Sam, Ian, Dave, Fred, Tom, Ted, Charlie, Bob. That's quite a litany, Maggie. Now... You're here by mistake. I didn't want to be. Never. Man, smell. I was burning. I'm sure I should pray for you. I don't know the words. I knew. I knew. Mummy, take me home. We shall help you to, to go home, Maggie. I hear the birds sing. The old man, virgin, the honourable guy, the cursed guy. No, why, Tim? I'll ask Maggie. I'll try to find out. <laughs> Sorry, Tim. Are you still there? Hello. Yes, come in, Mrs. Fry. She's fled. Thank the Lord. I thought I heard voices. We were just about leaving. Oh, oh my goodness, it does strike cold in here after the warm outside. I left my shopping. Oh, there it is in the corner. <laughs> if I forget myself one of these days, I will. Oh, oh what a funny smell. Like burning. Oh, is there? Um, it must be the new candle. We'll come out with you, Mrs. Fry. Come on, Tim. Mm, right, yes. I've, I've got the key. Got everything? Oh, I've never known this church so cold this time of the year. You should have a word with Arnold Thorpe about this. <laughs> well, Mrs. Francis Fry is a great gossip. Well, the cold church and the odd smell will be around the WI in no time. Yes, the least of our worries, wife. I don't know what words to use. Do you? Well, I think that we've been grasped by a hand. No, not from the grave, although I know what the romantics meant. From a quite different plane of things. Well, universal things. We're like physicists who've discovered a new element that's upset the whole of our previous knowledge. We'll try to see it like that. In my faith, I mean, all, all it means to me, all I've considered about life and death and good and evil, and I've tried to sustain... Rationally, my belief in the soul's place in eternity contradicts the idea of the spirit, some part of the soul, remaining attached to a physical, solid place on this earth, as if solid and physical in itself. I, I cannot believe it can happen. Well, yet it seems it has to us, although we remain sceptics. Hmm. Could it be that we've created something out of our imaginations, gave it a sort of substance? Well, I find that harder to believe than to believe we've had dealings with Maggie Bell's lost afterlife. Whatever has happened, for the moment, we must keep it to ourselves. Yes, yes, indeed. Do you think it... Well, she could have been hanging around the church since she died? I mean, 1938, almost 40 years. Well, she seemed to think 1976 was not her year. Time would mean nothing. Sure she has some connection with the, the crash, I heard. I'm trying to recall what she said. A pillion and too fast was some of it. Well, we call it she, you notice. I mean, giving it an identity. We'll have to. Can't call it the ghost of she, can we? Mm. We should give her a name. Maggie to her spectral face. Well, Spectral Bell. Oh, good, good idea. Always name a thing. Spectral Bell, it'll be Spectral Bell 
objected to her virgin crown, I think. Her short life commemorated in a great untruth. Mm. No bloody virgin was the expression before the list of chaps, and the honourable guy, the first guy. <laughs> Who's ever heard of a punning ghost? Yes. Yes, punning is said to be one of the trademarks of the devil, but by necromancers. So is she a fundamental manifestation of evil, primordial thing of the great beast? That, that she... No, is... Tim. She's only what's left of a lost country girl wanting her mother. Hmm. Oh, well, I'll try to think of her charitably. I'd like her out of my church, though. Well, the local rag has back copies since the 1880s. Shall I try to find out how she died? Well, let's not ask Carol. It's a good idea, though. I say guy. Guy. Hawkehurst is a guy. Baron Hawkehurst of Abbot's Ford. Mm. Well, once he would have been the honourable guy. But he's 80-odd. Still, in 1938... 40-odd. Probably had all the local girls by right. You know, I must contact her again, Pam. Try to make her see that she's not wanted. I don't want to go to bishop and exorcist. Her. Well, what will you say to her? Look, old girl, do clear off. Go and bother somebody else. <laughs> now then, old girl, let's have you. Come and say hello to a gentleman. I'm all alone. Summer evening is coming to its sweet-scented close. Hello? You're going to oblige? Sorry, wrong word. Crikey. That's not the scent of flowers. That's a perfume not to be sniffed at. So you are there, Maggie. Hello? Hello? Ah, uh, I can hear you, smell your perfume, but can't see you. Hello? <laughs> Shall we? I'll show you. Maggie, Maggie, <laughs> let me help you get away. Go home. Nothing wrong. I like it. Want it always. It's no good, Maggie, anymore. That part of you was gone. Can you walk like Clark Gable? I don't know. It was before my time. Listen, Maggie. Is it that crown which brings you back? Shape. Shape. They all laughed at it. My crown. My fanny. <laughs> no, I, I want to release your soul, Maggie. The heat burned my soul dead. No, no, no. The soul cannot be killed. Smash <laughs> from the bank. Always pain. Oh. Oh. Please, please, Maggie. You mustn't go on remembering. Maggie, as the great beast collected you, the evil one, brute devil. Filthy brute, come here. Oh, the beast. I wish I could see you. Can I see you somehow? It's dark. You'll have to feel. Feel me here. No, no, Maggie, Maggie, no. <laughs> Jesus, Jesus, it's great. <laughs> oh. It's me, Mr. Turner. This is Nightingale. Cold, cold, cold. Mrs. Nightingale? Ooh, you're on the floor. You'll have to shout. I'm a little deaf. Have you fallen over? That's yourself. Uh, no, 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 I'm, um, I I'm, I'm looking for woodworm in this pew. Under the seat. You, um, you never, you never know. Woodworm, did you say? Uh, woodworm under the seat. Never had woodworm in the seats. Never. Terrible smell of cheap scent, too. Ah, uh, ah, uh, I, I, I thought it was the woodworm smell. What was it called? Nights of Desire. I didn't know anybody still sold it. It, 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 it. It's moving off. I think. Uh, how can I help you, Mrs. Nightingale? Oh, I, I don't need help, Mr. Turner. I only came to put the magazines down in the porch while I was passing. Then I thought I heard voices. 
Ah, I'm so deaf. Ah, 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 I was singing to myself. <laughs> Sounded like a woman's voice. I, I had no notion you sang alto, no notion. Oh, God. Well, I, I've put the nags in the porch, so I, I'll be away, Vicar. I'd leave the old woodworm if I was you and go home. Good night, Mrs. Nightingale. Deaf she may be, but daft she is not. So, what would she make of all that? The accident occurred on the 16th of July, 1938. The inquest was a couple of months later. Well, Margaret Joan Bell was riding pillion on a motorbike which went out of control and crashed on the bend of Church Road. It seems that she was thrown off onto the bank by the churchyard and died before the ambulance arrived. Mm -hmm. Multiple injuries. Well, the driver of the bike was also injured, but not badly. The coroner said he wasn't to be prosecuted because he'd suffered enough mental torment as it was. Well, he was 21, and his name was Edward Thorpe. Oh, we should ask Harold. I I've noticed that the district is littered with Thorpes. Oh, this one, Edward, came from the village. Maybe the Ted, our spectral bell, speaks of. So there it is, darling. That crash, her death, has remained in the air, slipped out of time, got onto another plane. Mm, become a paranormal phenomena awaiting my arrival. Oh, well, yes, that's true in a way. I don't know what way you mean. I mean that it was lying in wait to snap at the heels of my faith. And I mean it was lying in wait for a virile, sexy vicar. I mean, it's hard enough to go around exuding faith these days without having the unknown asking awkward questions. It... What do you mean by virile, sexy vicar? Well, the spectral bell is still being rung by sex. Oh, nonsense. It's the chap who came out of the blue and said he knew her. Don't be silly, Tim. Plenty must have said that before. She went for you, got you on the ground. Sort of vestigial sex thing. How bloody awful. Well, how frustrating also. Well, being dead shouldn't really include sexual desire, should it? Oh, certainly not. I mean, it's bizarre. It's the plot of a blue movie. Desire of the dead or such like. I mean, what do I do? Pray. And I can't not go into my church, can I? The parish would notice. Just. No, no, no. I, I must be strong and cast her out somehow. I, mean, I think you'd better be there with me. You or six... Female police constables. That's the sort of protection I need. Believe you me. And if I can't cast her out, then I'd, I'd have to go to the bishop and ask him to arrange an, an exorcism. Blue movie with horror ingredients. I mean, what do I say to the blue bishop? Please, sir, this ghost girl tries to have me between the front pew and the altar steps. I, I don't think it's the sort of thing that should go on in a church and with the vicar. I mean, Mrs Nightingale was, was suspicious. Uh, and her sense of smell makes up for her auditory deprivation. Vicar on the floor, drunk or mad, like the last chap. Ponging of cheap perfumes, they just managed to get some village girl or boy out of the way in time. Any other explanations? I mean, I've looked through the Bible. It's terribly unhelpful about this sort of thing. It's jolly helpful of straight sex and murder and mother-in-laws and the like. But on ghost girls with sexual hang-ups, it's absolutely useless. I mean... It, it, the way she speaks, our Maggie, makes me sure she was proud of her bad reputation, still is proud of it. And that crown up there probably irks her. Well, you can't blame her, can you? And you spend your tender years screwing in every direction, get cut off in your first prime, and then find yourself a blessed virgin on a wall. I mean, that's punishment for sinning, if ever there was one. Particularly if you meant to sin, enjoyed sin, didn't think of it as sin anyway, doing, doing what comes down to it. If she'd been a holy Roman, she'd have confessed, and the whole thing would probably have remained locked in whatever circle of purgatory bad Roman girls who die young finish up in. I wish I could disapprove of the simple sins more easily than I do. I mean, lust is more natural than, 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 than sinful, I'm thinking. I mean, sad or frustrating or gay or horrible or legal or lovely, but it's, it's not really sinful. I'm sorry, sorry. Darling. Never let it be said that I don't allow you a word in edge ways. <laughs> now, we must take action. You grill Harold about Ted and Maggie. And I'll try to have a word with the girl herself. Tell her that you're my property, and that if she doesn't lay off, I'll scratch her eyes out. <laughs> Wrong stuff. All right, Vicar. Since you got your teeth in the story, I'll tell you. Why have you got your teeth in it, just as a matter of interest? Ah, um, various reasons, Harold. Uh, the Crown, for one thing... I, I don't think it's right and proper for the Crown to remain, I mean, I, if we know for certain that for she certain? wasn't... Hmm? She was no virgin, but I can't tell you at first hand. <laughs> <laughs> Many good ones. Well, there's only a couple or three still around, and I'll keep their names to myself, if you don't mind. Oh, fair enough, fair enough. 
At the time, surely the vicar should have known. What was his wonderful name? The Reverend Hugo Vincent de Brokeborn. Even in 1938, he was an anachronism. A bachelor, and I reckon an old queen. The hunting, shooting, fishing sort kept his rods behind the altar. Very upper crust. I don't think he ever said more than good day to the common village people. Never went into their home, sent the curate. Yes, he had curates one after the other. Wretched young chaps who did the visiting the commoners act. Queen Victoria was still on the throne in 1938 in the sort of village this was. Yes, yes, I suppose I'd have been a wretched curate. Mm. What about Margaret Bell's parents? Did you know them? Oh, to say hello to them. Narrow, respectable people who had a small holding on Duck Lane. Mm. They didn't mix with the village. God-fearing. I believe they belonged to some sort of religious sect. But on the other hand, they had the girl buried, C of E. So they, so they really didn't know what their daughter was up to? Well, they put her up for a crown, like families do. If they had some idea she wasn't worthy, they shut it out. Their sort often does. And the rest of the village? The rest of us? Uh -huh. I wasn't going to risk making a fool of myself, not at 22, saying what I knew was only hearsay, not with that vicar. Also, I didn't care all that much. If a virgin crown made somebody happy, who was I to gainsay them? Those who knew at first hand, did any of them consider saying what they knew? No, not in public. Probably they didn't care enough or had other good reasons for not admitting the offence. The rest of them, those that complained afterwards no end in particular, they lacked the courage of their convictions. So it all went through on the nod. Mm, it probably wouldn't happen today. And once the family had the crown up on the wall, they reckoned there would be no dissent. Probably, but they reckoned wrong. Hmm. Some folk were offended. Sanctimonious, all right, but worked up also. As far as I can recollect it, Mr. and Mrs. Bell were told bluntly by one or two of the offended why they were offended. The Bells couldn't take it, so they sold up and went. Nobody knew where. But the crown still remained. One or two tried to broach the subject to the vicar, but he didn't know what they were on about. Then we had a war. If that put a stop to a lot of things, I've been told. Edward Thorpe drove the motorbike. Ted Thorpe. My first cousin, my old man's brother's youngest son. We were good friends. Once he was healed up after the accident, he joined the RAF. He went to the States during the war and back there to live after it was over. As a family, we lost touch with him over the years. It happens, as you'll find out. He never came back here. Never could face it. Never can understand. Well, thank you, Harold. You'll be careful what you do, won't you? Careful? Oh, yes, yes, very, very careful. Now I'll collect my wife, who's alone in the church, poor thing. Yes, you should do that. The church is no place for a nice girl to be alone in. Temperature keeps dropping, so she's lurking around. I'll try walking like Clark Gable. I beg your pardon? Oh, well, she once asked me if I could. Hmm. Give her a quiet shout, yes? Yes. We'll call her out. Mm. Hello? Hello, Maggie? Hello, Maggie? Maggie? I want to talk with you. Hello? Hello? I'd like to have had him. Oh, now, come on, Maggie. Let's put sex on one side. Do you understand me? Maggie? Tim, don't move suddenly, but look by the chancel. There she is. A real shape. Eve coming out of the dust. Suggestive and yet amorphous. Say if you understand us, Maggie. Say you. Say you. Say you. So something of the girl stands before us. Scares the living daylights out of me. Oh, don't go near. And this is the last thing. Maggie, we're going to pray for your soul. Not soul. Have. Body. My body. You are all soul, Maggie. And you shouldn't be here. We want to release your soul. Her bitch. Go. Go. No, Maggie. This is our church. You are the one who must go. And stay where you are, Maggie. Come. We'll do it all. Come. Maggie, we know how you died. <laughs> no, 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 yes. Lie. Lie. 
You died, Maggie. Suddenly. Unexpectedly. Can't die. Can't die. Yes, that's it. That's it, but you did. And you belonged so much to life that you haven't been able to leave it. It was terrible, Maggie, the accident, but it happened. Earth in my mouth. Oh, sorry. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> See? See my tits? <laughs> See? Lord Jesus, give me help. Take this girl. Look, look, I'm down for you. <laughs> see, see, leg. No, he doesn't want to see you. Go away, go away, you horrid girl, go. Oh, burning me, dark for me. Go, go, cold, cold. Turn into a cloud and go, Maggie. Go. Hello, hello, hello. That's her leaving hello. She's gone. Only the smell of her cheap perfume left. That breaks my heart, Pam. Her cheap perfume. In. Terrible. How terrible. Death and how unfair. But it's happened, darling. Long ago, another world. I know, I know. I'm so sorry, it's silly of me. You can make her go. Neither I nor my faith can. It isn't just that, Tim. What's left of her is hanging on to life so strongly. And life was sex to her. But well, whenever you're here in your spiritual home, she's drawn back. <laughs> I, I think that must mean I, I, I'm, I'm stronger in the flesh than in the spirit. No, darling, that's not true. It's only how she sees it, her truth. She is now a fundamental. Taps a sauce in me. A succubi. What do we do? I have no more tether. I, I can't hurry around the church. I mean, she, she could appear in the middle of a service. Or well, maybe she has and no one's noticed. Oh, thought strikes a chill. I need advice. Better see the bishop. Don't you agree? I do. Well, after all, Bishop Collins is very human hmm? for a bishop. I've been meaning to visit you, Turner, since your installation, but somehow... I can only apologise. I have a problem, my lord. Uh, this is why I came. Do let's sit down. Thank you. Uh, let the problem stay on one side a moment. If we talk a little, I'll get to know you a little, and that will help with the problem, or should. Uh, yes, my lord. Not small talk of a religious nature, never fear. We do have something in common. Hmm? How is Harold Thorpe these days? Uh, my verger, my lord. Hmm. <laughs> well, if ever I reach his age, I only hope I'll be as fit in mind and body as he is. <laughs> Harold and myself last saw one another at your installation. He's a remarkable man, as I'm sure you've discovered. Well-read, shrewdly intelligent. He's not the usual sort of verger, sir, I, I, I imagine. Hard to get to know, but we, my wife and I, are, I think, starting to make a relationship. It wouldn't be easy, I know. I often have wondered if Harold isn't an atheist at heart. Yeah. And I don't mean that as a reproach. I sometimes wonder the same about myself. H H Harold has never mentioned that he knew you, sir. Mm. Have you known him long? Oh, since 1937. I was 23, Harold a few years older. Uh, this was in my parish, sir? In Abbot Upton, yes. I was a curate there for a year. The vicar was one Hugo Vincent de Brokeborn. Mm. Oh, a terrible man. Harold has spoken to me of him, sir. Mm. I almost left the church because of him. Almost became a red revolutionary. Instead, I got a mean, tough living in the northeast corner, which I enjoyed. Harold and I always kept in touch, by letter at least. Yes, my wife adored him. Did he ever marry, sir? <laughs> no. Uh, there were women in his life, but marriage he found... comic. <laughs> <laughs> in 1937, sir, c can you remember if you ever came across a girl, uh, of 17 she would be then, called Margaret Joan Bell? Maggie Bell? Hmm. Good grief. How quite extraordinary. I'll show you. A few days ago, I was looking through some old photo albums, tidying up, really. I came across some photos taken at the Abbot's Upton Fete of 1937. 
Maggie Bell in the foreground. I've written in the albums the details. Here she is. Remembered her vividly. That's her, front left. The thin, wretched bloke in the dog collar is myself. There's another of her over. There. The photographer knew a good subject when he saw one, didn't he? I'd say so. Yes, sir. She was quite a piece, believe me. Looked like an actress called Jean Harlow. A natural blonde, almost platinum, with the skin that goes with it. Translucent. And the sort of figure that made young men go dry in the throat. It did me. <laughs> what became of her? Does anybody know? She was killed, sir. I'm afraid, in July 1938. Oh, poor child. I have a recollection in the back of my mind. Uh, probably Harold wrote about it to me. A crash, wasn't it? Uh, a motorbike crash, yes. Uh, she was on the pillion. Uh, the driver was Harold's cousin, Ted Thorpe. <laughs> Coincidence is an odd business. And the memory works in mysterious ways. It's wonders to perform. Until I looked through that album the other day, <clears throat> I'd forgotten Maggie Bell completely. Then you arrive and mention her, and her death. That also I'd forgotten of. <sighs> She shouldn't have died at 18, with all that life in her. God works also in his mysterious ways. Hmm? Or what is it? Fate? She is my problem, my lord. Is she? The long dead girl? How? Well, to begin with, uh, they gave her a virgin crown, which is still up in the neck. Oh, good grief. She was notorious village-wise at 17. Harold never told me she'd been stuck up in the nave. He's told me about her, sir. She had a sort of sex appeal, you know, that reverberated. Shock waves leaping out into the world to put something of such elemental sexual nature as nicely as I can. On the evening of that fate, she made me dance with her. I was very innocent and it was quite overpowering. Of course, Broke Bourne wouldn't have known, or cared if he did. Her parents knew not either, I take it. Yeah, Harold said they, they didn't want to, but afterwards were forced to listen. Uh, they left the parish. Yes. Now I presume there's the question of whether the crown should be removed. A problem of conscience, well, really. Th 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 that, that is one problem, my lord. Uh, there is another connected to it. You tell me. She, Maggie Bell, is haunting the church. My dear boy, you keep stopping me in my track. The ghost of the girl haunts the church, you say? Do you know for sure? Do but personally... Both of us, my wife and I, have seen and heard her, sir. You have? Hmm. Blimey. Well, how do you know it's Maggie's ghost? In its own way, it has is, it is answered that it is. It, it speaks of the crash, it, it cries out about its death, and she, it, behaves towards me, how can I put it? I am her sex object. Oh. She is the Maggie Bell she was in life, sexually oriented. You do mean all this? Yes, I can see that you do. Uh, but are you sure that nobody's playing a trick on you? Well, no, I, I, I thought so at first, but no, we've, we've eliminated the dirty tricks, my lord. Also, I've discovered that the sound of the crash, or of a crash, and a girl screaming, has been heard on summer evenings since 1938. I've heard this myself. The crash was just by the churchyard. Yes, your predecessor, whom I considered eccentric but not downright mad, told me about the crash and the screaming heard by a small congregation in the church one evening song. Yes, not that he wanted me to do anything about it, and he accepted it as a fact of life. <sighs> so you think Maggie Bell has been stuck in the church since 1938? Uh, not exactly, my yes, lord. unlikely, I agree. Some sort of news of her appearances would have got around before now. Uh, my lord... I'm still in two minds as to whether to accept what I've seen and heard and felt of this manifestation. Oh, you have to accept it, Turner. If it's there, it is there. It may be an unexplainable fact, but it's a fact all the same. Well, the, the fact I can't stomach, my lord, is that the soul of a dead person can remain stuck here on earth, and neither soul or body, and, and certainly not wholly. Uh, only a limbo thing. It's, it's so irrational. Mm, I've always found life pretty irrational. So perhaps we can expect the afterlife to be the same. But I know and sympathise with your objections. You know, I learned to take the rather ridiculous idea of hauntings, phantoms, ghosts, the paranormal is today's jargon, mm. seriously years ago. And this is not my first exposure to such things. Why they should happen, God literally alone knows. But frequently, it is some soul-searing experience at the point of death which leaves behind... You know what? 
a sensation born from the kinetic energy of the moment of death, like an explosion's visible aftermath. At times, what is left is horrible, such as a stifling room where men once tortured other men to death. At times, it can be downright uninteresting, like the monk figure who will stand at a gate for no apparent reason. And this girl, Maggie, died violently near the church. Uh, a few yards from where she was buried. Mm, so something of her remained after the explosion. Now, what brought her into the church, I wonder? My wife has a theory that it has to do with my presence. Mm, she's probably right. Yes, you're a young and vital male person. Maggie treats you, as you say, like a sex object. You're her victim now, as I once was almost all those years ago. You probably are responsible, I'm afraid. People often seem to act as a catalysis to the ghost world. It's quite unavoidable. In my own defence, my lord, I would add that she seems to take a pretty dim view of the virgin crown. Mm, would that draw her back? A bitter joke on the dead? Mm. Well, what do we do? I is it possible to, to remove a virgin crown? I don't lord? know. But I'll find out. And if there's no ruling, then I'll make one up. It should be removed. And I suppose we'd better try to exorcise the creature, send her packing. Better close the church until then. No, or at least I shouldn't conduct the services. Eh? It would be embarrassing if she pounced when you were in the pulpit. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. It's best the church is closed, not you shut out. We must really have her out. Now, what do you tell your flock of sceptics, I wonder? I'm afraid it would be necessary to tell them something and to hold a public meeting to do this. One really can't shut up the church without a village meeting as to why these days. And you must tell them the truth without going into details, I think. Yes, that's, that's something I don't look forward to, my lord. No, nor would I. But you're the one who must do it. Take the village hall. Let everybody have their say. A general free-for-all. It could clear the air. Something could come out of it. Now, don't ask me what. I speak as a soothsayer, not as your bishop. You look thoroughly smug, Harold Thorpe. Oh. Move the ironing from that chair, and then you'll be able to sit down. Oh. The chair... <laughs> The man-made fibres that don't need the iron are taking quite a lot of the sting out of bachelorhood. So, you've seen the bishop? Yes, the poor lamb, and you might have said that you knew the right Reverend Basil Collins as a buddy. It would have seen I was boasting, or worse. A sort of bishop's pawn? In a way. Now, if the vicar had said the church was haunted by this female party, then I could have gone to the bishop for him. Not that your husband would have let me. True. Still, you do look smug. It must be the thought of this general meeting. The village hall is free of bingo, wish drives, conservatives, jumbles and the rest on Tuesday next. I've said 7.30. Oh, good. I'll tell him myself. Four days to prepare. Yeah, tell the vicar to say as little as is fit. There'll be enough coming from the body of the hall and most of it'll be nonsense. Well, will people come? Bound to. I'm making sure some do, including some who knew her well, like his nibs, Guy Hawkehurst. Maggie said something about an honourable guy. I suppose it wasn't a definition or category. It was a scalp she wore proudly. <laughs> a scalp that's come home to roost. Uh, if you see what I mean. Yeah, I do. So, tell the vicar, 7.30 next Tuesday it'll be. Righto, Harold. Uh, so there it is. I've put it as briefly as possible because uh, I'm sure you'll have some questions to ask. Yeah, Vicar, I'd like to ask you a question. My name's Bob Masters. I've lived in the village all my life. Uh, far away, Mr. Masters. Well, was this uh, ghost thing a holy ghost thing? I, I'm not sure if I understand you. Uh. Well, a, a ghost in a church should be a holy ghost, shouldn't it? <laughs> I, I see you're being facetious. Um, are there any serious questions? Uh, my name's Group Captain Anderson Hay. Um, <laughs> what you've been telling us is a, uh, well... It's a bit steep to you now, a bit sort of hard to swallow. I mean, a phantom presence and so on. Somewhat vague, isn't it? I mean, you're all very unlikely, if you ask me. Now, are you sure that you and your wife's imaginations didn't go pop? Uh, I mean, go over the top? Yes, yes, I agree. As my wife says, the imagination can go pop. Uh, I can assure you, uh, group captain, our imaginations did not go anything. They were not involved. Uh, I don't know how much of a parish council matter this is. It's but a parochial church council matter, actually. Uh, and we've been kept entirely in the dark. 
Um, I'm sorry to have kept you and the PCC in the dark, Mrs. Willis. Uh, only it did seem rather difficult to know quite what to tell you. And then events moved fast and, and the bishop said, shut the church, so, so I had to at once. But I'm sure the parochial church council would have dealt with the ghost very firmly if they had known. Yeah. <laughs> you all know who I am. Yeah, you're Frank Freud. <laughs> and you're the worst for a drink, Sam Not. <laughs> PCC did know, Mrs. Willis. I told you myself. Uh, Mrs. Nightingale and I thought there were some odd things going on in the church. I told you, it was suddenly cold. Oh, and... yes, you did mention how cold it was, and the smell of cheap perfume, and the vicar on the floor. Ooh, wasn't that enough? You should have got hold of Mr. Turner and asked him. When you're too much at loggerheads with each other on the parochial to do anything useful. I object to that aspersion, as I'm sure the other members of the PCC do. Right, the one of them here. Uh, uh, ladies, ladies, g gentlemen, please. Uh, this is not helping matters forward. Uh, Mr. Ponsonby, I, uh, you were going to ask a question, I believe, as chairman of the parish council. I was, but I can't remember now what it was. <laughs> but, but something Mrs. Willis said just now leads me to ask another question. The smell of cheap perfume. Was that part of the haunting in the church? Mrs. Nightingale will tell you she smelled it. Mrs. Nightingale... Uh, no, 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 that won't be necessary. Uh, all right. Um, Mrs. Nightingale? I have my death end on so I can hear every word. I found the vicar under a pew looking for woodworm, so oh. he said. <laughs> the smell wasn't woodworm, though. Cheap perfume. Knights of the Tsar or some such. Woolworths used to send it years back. Uh, there was a smell of perfume, and I was on the floor because the ghost had pushed me there. I take it that the ghost wears the perfume? Yes. Sometimes it seems to. So we can assume that the ghost is a female ghost? If it's a bloke, it's one of those. <laughs> uh, yes. Yes, it is the ghost of a girl. Uh, I see. My name's Hawkehurst. Uh, yes, Lord Hawkehurst? Uh, Harold Thorpe got me along here, and since I'm here, I may as well ask a question. It's this. Does this church haunting business have any connection with the sound of a crash and a female screaming that's been heard near the church for years? Yes, I believe it does. Oh, do it. Then an awful lot of other questions occur to me. Yes, perhaps they occur to a few others of us here also. <coughs> I'll sit down. Will somebody kindly explain to me what all this is about? Uh, well, I've lived in this village since I was born, and so has my Charlie, so can I say what I think, Vicar? Certainly, Mrs. Key. Well, Charlie and myself have both heard that bike crashing, and the girl screaming, as my Charlie has seen his dead old dog cocking its leg in the garden against the shed, only there was no liquid. <laughs> May I ask where the devil all this is getting us? No, hang on, group captain, hang on. I can't tell things but in my own fashion. Charlie and myself first heard that crash one summer evening in 1938 when we was courting, long time back. And we went running to the sound of it and when we got there, it took us half a minute at most, the girl had stopped screaming. And wasn't anywhere to be seen. <laughs> Wrong. She were on the verge by the churchyard, moaning and already half dead or more. The chap and his mobag were all over the road and he was concussed. The, they didn't wear crash hats those days, only a back-to-front cap. We did our best for her. Somebody got on the phone at the vicarage and the ambulance arrived after about ten minutes, but she was already still the life gone from her. One thing, though, she had a fight with death to the last. She jerked and rolled and kept grabbing at me. She didn't want to go. Well, some of us remember who that girl was. Same age as me, she was. Charlie and I saw her die. Since then, though, her death on Sat of Road, we've heard it. So have others, strangers to the village even. Well, make what you like about it. Uh, I'm more or less a stranger, seeing that I've only been here six months. Dobbs is the name. I live in the close. He's what's called a young executive. Thank you. Graphic. Uh, 
I don't know what to make of any of it. A ghost girl who wears cheap perfume and closes the church and has to be exorcised. A crash that goes on haunting the road. I, quite honestly, don't believe in a word of it. But I will admit that I'm a sceptic in these things. But I do believe in things being investigated. I think that the British Society for Psychical Research ought to be informed of all these events. Let them come here with their equipment and expertise and lay these ghosts for good. Uh, could we have a vote on this, Vicar? Uh, no, I'm sorry. Uh, to call in the psychical researchers would be a matter for the church to decide upon. Uh, and the fewer and I... people who know about the business outside this village, the better. <laughs> I do think you're being very narrow-minded about it. I mean, if there is a ghost girl, wouldn't it be interesting to find out what sort of girl she is? We know what sort of girl she is, Mr. Dobbs. Whatever do you mean, Mr. Thorpe? Are you on familiar terms with this female spectre? I don't really like this, Vicar. I mean, what, what does it all mean? You know who the girl was. I mean, has there been some sort of, well, what do you call it, occult goings on, going on in the church? There's been no such thing going on in our church group, Captain. Mrs. Turner wouldn't have it, I know. How <laughs> <laughs> right, right you are, Mrs. Fry. Yeah, yeah. Um, Vicar, <laughs> I, I kicked off with a question about the Holy Ghost. And the ref showed you the red card straight away, Bob. Yeah, well, I, I wasn't being disrespectful. All I was trying to say was, were the ghost a, a nun or somebody holy-like? Because if she was, there's no harm in the vicar or the verger getting to know her. I'd ask her uh, what her troubles are. I'm, I'm sorry I showed you the red card, Mr. Masters. No, no, she isn't a nun of any sort, or, or a church person at all, I'm afraid. Then is she some poor ghost creature what's wandered in by mistake, like? In a way she is, Mrs. Sand. Oh. I say, Hawk has to be. It's simple enough, isn't it? Something to do with a crash, right? There was a certain young lady killed in that crash, as Mrs. Kick, who was Gertie Go-Along at the time, is so graphically described. Oh, well, I did tell you. Some of us remember who that girl was, I hope. Some of us knew her somewhat better than perhaps we ought. She, she was 18 when she died. Right? Too blooming true. <laughs> you were a wild lad, Sam Not, 40 years back. I'm a good deal older, so I can state it without prejudice. Uh, Masters there, with his questions about non-ghosts, has forgotten. I'll put a fibre on it until now. What, Bob Masters, eh? Oh, Robert Duck. What was her name? If you went into the church sometimes, Robert, you'd not have forgotten. Well, this is becoming more and more stupid. Yes, I do agree. Will somebody kindly explain in simple language? Oh, she must be celebrated in the church in some way. She has a virgin crown, Mr. Dobbs. Mm, what? Oh, yes, yes, so I've heard. Well, perhaps she's come to see if it's still there, eh? Probably she has. Uh, if this girl is the one Lord Hawkehurst speaks of as being a bit of a flirt, to put it mildly... Flirt? She had rampant sexuality, Mr. Punsonby. She weren't no virgin, neither. And yet she has a virgin crown. How come, Vicar? It, it did all happen before I was even a twinkle in my father's eye. But it, it's it seems... a long story, Punsonby. I'll huh? tell you sometime. She was called Margaret Joan Bell, Maggie Bell, right? And she's come back to rub our noses in our <coughs> old crimes, is that it? If ever she went away. She's always been on that stretch of road, eh, Harold? I think you've summed it up, Lord Hawkehurst. Quite why she's arrived in the church is anybody's guess. Uh, all that matters now is to get her out, to release her soul from its earthbound imprisonment. I haven't said much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for emphasis like, but I'd like to say this. Maggie used to scoff at the virgin crowns hanging there in her time. I can understand her coming back. Can't understand why she's waited so long. As she's been there all the time and the vicar and Mrs. Vicar are the first with eyes to see her. Ironic, that's what it is, that she's got one, a crown. Like giving a devil's minion a halo. All you say is quite right, Sam Not. We should surely have the crown removed, Vicar. She didn't deserve it, and it shouldn't be there. The broken church council must take action. There are no rules, Mrs. Willis. Uh, but the bishop is, however, prepared to make a ruling. Oh, come, Vicar. Surely the PCC have the power. Don't think the parochial have that sort of power, Mrs. Didn't get your name. 
Bishop Collins knows as well as I do that the custom goes back into what are called the mists of time. And you can bet on it that more than one virgin who got her crown got it when nobody was looking or saying. <coughs> it's uh, up to us, isn't it, Vicar? Yeah. Uh, I'll sit down. I rather think, Lord Hawkehurst, that the bishop was leaving matters to me and the parish in the first instance. Uh, Padre, may I ask, what did the bishop say in <laughs> so many words? He said um, something would probably come out of a general meeting, not that he had any idea what, uh, and that he was speaking more as a soothsayer than a bishop. <laughs> <laughs> Good for Collins. Used to be curate here, 1937. So he may have heard of our Miss Bell. Hope that was all. <laughs> it's time we made a decision, Vicar. We've talked enough, I'm sure. Uh, I agree, Mrs. Fry. I believe that a small... Yes, Mrs. Nightingale? We should make a decision about the crown. Yes, we have, dear. That's what we're doing now, Dad. Uh, to, to, to continue, I, I believe that a small group of us, uh, the verger, Mrs. Will Willis, uh, Mrs. Fry, myself, should remove the offending crown and the commemorating plaque. Does the meeting agree? Yeah. Yes. When they been removed, what are you going to do with them, Vicar? I haven't thought that far yet. Put the crown on our grave to rot away. Ah, good idea, Gertie. It's not my business to interfere in church matters, but don't you reckon, Vicar, that a ceremony, something uh, straightforward, wouldn't be out of order? At her grave or somewhere. I can't think where else. I think it would be very much in order, Lord Hawkers. <laughs> May I make a suggestion? <laughs> I think we can let Mrs. Turner make a suggestion. She has, after all, been as quiet as a church mouse up until now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Well, Maggie Bell died on the 16th of July. That's this coming Saturday. In the evening, around 8.30, will I have read the inquest reports. So, wouldn't it be a good idea if we had a ceremony at that time on Saturday upon the actual spot where she died? Or is it too ghoulish? Well, I think it's pretty ghoulish, I must say. And why all the mumbo-jumbo? What do you make, Dobbs, for a living? Me? Mm. Uh, my firm makes typewriters and copiers, and telex machines. Oh, good for them. But you wouldn't sell a one without the sales mumbo-jumbo, would you? Okay. Right, Vicar. Mm. Those of us who knew her, in the biblical sense, will be there. Yes, perhaps her ghost will see us as we are now. And besides, she's best out of this world. <laughs> Thank you. We all agree? No, I don't. Yes. Yes. Um, well, I, I, I will have some sort of mumbo-jumbo ready for the occasion. There's the ladder in place, Vicar. Hmm. Straight below Margaret Joan Bell's virgin crown. There. Have you got a head for heights? Yeah, well, it, it's not the height I'm worried about, Harold. Ah, no. No, of course it's not the height, Vicar. No. no. Uh, what does the parochial church council think of it, Mrs. Willis? Think of what? I mean, well, we've decided to take it down. Mm. Who should go up the ladder to take it down? The vicar or the verger? Well, I read it. And I, I mean, uh, do I have to take a decision? For the PCC? Oh, the PCC. <laughs> well, uh, uh, think of it uh, as an opinion, Mrs. Willis. Yes. Well, uh, one would expect the verger to fetch and carry. Yeah, yeah. 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 Mm. Of course it's your job, Harold. I'm not as young as I used to be, Mrs. Turner. Oh, stuff and nonsense. I've seen you going up that ladder like a two-year-old. Yes, mm. Mr. Thorpe, you'll go up the ladder to dust the crowns and clean the nameplates all the time. So, verger, up you go again. Anyway, it'll obviously be safer for you up there than it would be for me. Oh, well, there you're right. Yeah. I'll take my courage in both hands. I can't see why. And why safer? Well, Maggie is quite likely to attack my poor husband, Mrs. Willis. Mm. And at the top of a ladder, that could be tricky. Hmm. So you see, she could attack me too. Oh, you're taking it seriously. I mean, you are, really. Well, best to do so. So I need courage. The bishop will probably give me a medal. You put your foot on the second run, Vicar. Ah, they got a nice sway to them with these ladders, this particular type. Turning cold in here. I've noticed. 
Are you going to say a prayer or a few words, Vicar, when I take it down? Yeah, uh, only for your safety and return, Harold. Oh, you can start now. Here we are. Now, we don't want to come off the hook easy. Ah, but it doesn't. Hello? Hello? Bitch. Bloody bitch. I beg your pardon. Never was that. Oh, Hush! You stay where you are, Maggie. Stay where you are. He had such a lovely thingy. Where, yeah. Where is she? I mean... Who's she referring to, I wonder? Ah, I see what it is. The wire's a bit bent. Hold hard. Hold hard, Vicar. Got it. Pinch, punch, pinch. Oh, oh somebody pinched me on me. You know what? Bum, bum, bum. Hey, you come back, Mrs. Willis. Come here, come here. Mrs. Willis, please. Now stay away, Maggie. You're coming down, Harold. All right. All right. Just waiting to see if she's moving on me. Oh, this crown is as fragile as a moth's wing. Down, down, bitch, cow, bitch, go, go. There's somebody here she doesn't like. And I'm beginning to dislike her or what's left of her, and that isn't Christian or sensible. I actually felt a pinch. Oh, Thank you, Harold. Now, Maggie, we have your crown, and we're going to take it to the spot where you died. There, we shall say prayers over it, and then you will leave us. Hello? Cold? Cold? Hello? Go. Go. Come, ladies. Uh, Harold, uh, shut the church, please, after we join the procession. I will, Vicar. Shut her in, or shut her out. Ah, Harold. I don't know if I like the choice of psalm. Good evening, my Lord Bishop. I don't know if I like seeing a bishop lurking among the tombstones. Young Turner has to do the trick himself. They're going down to the road, I take it. To the place where she died, with her crown. Did the taking it down go smoothly? Oh, it depends what you mean by smoothly. The young lady was certainly in evidence. Mrs. Willis was pinched on the bottom. Oh, dear. Uh, you'll notice I'm not in my clericals. Oh, it's a very bishop prick tweed. You should have a beard with it. <laughs> I know Guy Hawkehurst, but who are the chaps flanking him? Sam Knott and Bob Masters. They shared her favours. Ah, a good turnout must be 20 or more who's the fat old dame at the back mrs kick used to be gertie go along <laughs> charlie kick never rubbed two words together he still doesn't ah they got to the road let's hope there's not much traffic there's no traffic but look at that coming up the road oh it's dobbs and some friends newcomers in new houses i thought he didn't believe in the ghost we haven't had a village demonstration since 1871, when they stoned the bishop. Hmm. It could always happen. What will young Turner do, I wonder? Uh, this is the spot. Uh, Pam, will you put her crown on the ground, please? Uh, shall, shall we form a half circle? Why, Mr. Dalton, Miss Green, singing the different tune? I wish I knew, Mrs. Nightingale. Best ignore them, I think. I say, it looks just like the Sweeney. Oh, it's nice, P.C. Black in his little panda. Quiet, everybody. We represent the rights of ghosts to be left alone. Ha, yeah, got yeah. their word for it, have you? You clear all. Or bash over the edge with your bloody banners. Now then, what's going on here? Good Lord, he's actually said it. <laughs> uh, 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 good, good evening, Mr. Black. I'm conducting a, a short service of remembrance on this spot. A bit unusual, but I can't see why you shouldn't. And you lot? Uh, well, Constable, we're rather opposed to this so-called service. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Oh, what's that placard say? Hold it up, lad. The Society for the Preservation of English Ghosts. Now, are you having me on? Preserve right? any old thing these days, they will. No, we are perfectly serious, Constable. 
If a ghost exists here, then we believe it has the right to exist here without being harassed by the clergy. Quite yes, right. Sir. Are you attempting to harass a ghost, Vicar? Oh, if you consider holding a service of remembrance for a ghost harassment, well, well then I'm guilty of doing so, yes. I've not seen or heard any of this. If I wrote this down in my notebook, the inspector would see to it that I don't go out alone in my nice little car in future. <laughs> Or else put you lot under observation in the nearest loony bin. I, I know it must sound odd, but Coming I up to 8.30, Vicar. Oh, yes. I say, Constable, I'm Lord Hawkehurst. I don't think we've met. No, I uh, don't go to the House of Lords much these days. Nor do I. But we must get on, don't you see? The crash is due at any moment, and then our ghost girl may turn up and all that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's all perfectly clear. <clears throat> the village has gone round the twist. <laughs> Nothing I can do. <clears throat> uh, you lot with the banners there. You, you'll stand over there and don't disturb the peace. All right, right. all right. Uh, line up, everybody, line up. And mm -hmm. think the ghost to stay. Yeah. Think it. Yeah, you do that. <coughs> and you, Vicar. Uh, I'd be grateful if you'd get on with the service and then clear off out of it. Uh, thank you, Mr. Black. Uh, let us pray. I'm just mm. going to be an impartial observer. Yeah. Right. Almighty and everlasting Father, we... He's not all that bright, is P.C. Black, which under the circumstances is a godsend. The poor chap. It looks an interesting ceremony. He's written his own prayer, so Gather I hear. Gather her up, O oh God, so that she no longer wanders this place, her limbo in torment and anguish for her dead body and her completed life. Amen. Motorbike. Amen. That's it. Now, now, stay where you are. There's a bike coming and it's too fast. Now, move back. Please. It's our motorbike, Mr. Black. What can you see, Mr. Dobbs? I can't see a damn thing. <laughs> left the girl behind. Yes. She's materialised very clearly. Like she was. Like she was. Well, that... No. Can't be. It is, Mr. Dobbs. Maggie Bell. Hello, Maggie. Hello. Hello. Ten. Um. Maggie, the crash has happened for the last time. Now you must go also. Last time? Last time? I say, Maggie, have a look at us. You won't know us, though, once you did. Sam not this one, Bob Masters this, and I'm Guy Hawkehurst. Say hello, lads. Hello, Hello Maggie. Maggie. Guy the first. Sam. Bob. I can't. Nobody. Tim. You can't have Tim, Maggie. Can't. Look by your feet. You've taken your virgin crown out of the church. There it is. Bloody virgin. Last time. Gone. Go, Maggie. Go. I beseech you. Maggie, leave us. Join in, everyone. Leave us, Maggie. Leave, leave, us. leave, us. leave us, Maggie. Release her soul from limbo, O oh Lord God. Take her soul from this place. Your time is past, Maggie. Long, long past. Go to eternal time, Maggie. To peace. To the only truth. No more. No more burning. Who knows? Who knows? I can't bear to look. Who knows? She seems to have gone. 
It was rather beautiful, you know. Like a cobweb or such like, moving away in the wind. She's gone for good, I'd say. Well done, Vicar. Ah. <laughs> and you, Harold Thorpe. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Mrs. My husband's in the sitting room with Lord Hawkehurst, who had a bottle of malt whiskey concealed on his person. <laughs> We're hoping that it'll restore Tim's power of speech. Ah, I hope he didn't see me among the tombstones, Mrs. Turner. Oh, on the way back, he said, who's that chap with Harold? But then he recognised you, mufty or not, and said not another word. Ah. Well, do come in. <laughs> and you, Harold. Ah, thank you. It wasn't of my doing. Ah, hello, Collins. Ah. Thought I saw you earlier reading the epitaph. <coughs> I was meant to be unseen, Hawkehurst. What, in that suit? <laughs> Get some more glasses, young Pamela. She's a lovely girl, isn't she? <laughs> mm -hmm. Glasses. Have a spot of the malt, Collins. Ah. And you, Harold. Oh, thank you, sir. Glasses for the use of... Well, it thank went you. very well. <laughs> oh, thank you. Oh, dear. That poor boy's vocal cords have dried up. Lubrication is necessary. The curiosity got the better of me, Turner. Yours was a very remarkable show of strength. No of faith. My blessing upon you. In malt whiskey, but nonetheless a blessing. Oh, no, thank you, my lord. Ah, I'm, ex I'm exhausted. <laughs> Nobody expects you to talk, darling. Drink your scotch and keep quiet. Well, your health, all. Our young lady materialised quite beautifully, I thought. It was as if she had to do something special for her last appearance, you know. Hmm. It's the way these things are done, is it, Carlos? It often seems so, Hawkehurst. There's a strongly dramatic quality in a lot of haunting. I've no idea why. Although the devil and all his works are, of course, also strong drama. It reminded me of the Lyceum in the 20s. Pure melodrama. Mm. Ah, sort of thing uh, called The Lost Soul or some such. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I feel as though I've played immensely long stage part. Hamlet or... Hamlet ha had worries. She said, who knows? That was a bit rum. Perhaps she didn't know and was wondering. Did you see Dobbs? He looked almost angry. Uh, people react in various ways. Some faint, some take to their heels, some are rooted to the spot, and some don't seem to notice. Well, they all noticed except for Mrs Nightingale, and she seemed quite oblivious. I suppose because she couldn't hear. It's a shame she didn't suffer shock and have her hearing restored. Oh, my dear Harold... A ghost is one thing, a miracle quite another. But they're both, <laughs> both a matter of what you're prepared to believe in, eh? Well, this time next week, Dobbs will have rationalised the whole thing in some way. Mm. You'll probably accuse me of arranging the thing from a box of tricks. <laughs> and we won't get P.C. Black to come into the village unless we have a murder in future. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this whiskey's doing me a power of good. <laughs> I know... I'm still sceptical of, of, of the paranormal or, or supernatural. I mean, are we all the victims of a, a, a vast trick played by the collective imagination, or is it, is it more things than we can dream of in our philosophy? I mean, who knows? Who knows? That was The Girl Who Didn't Want to Be by Frederick Bradnam, in which Angela Pleasance played Maggie Bell, Simon Cadell, Tim Turner, Joanna David, Pam Turner, and Christopher Benjamin, Harold Thorpe. Richard Herndl was Lord Hawkehurst, and Philip Voss, the Bishop. The ladies of the village were played by Margot Boyd, Pauline Letts, Susan Richards, Gladys Spencer, Brenda Kay, and Janet Burnell, and the men by Eric Allen, Manning Wilson, Henry Knowles, Kenneth Shanley, John Gabriel, and Peter Wickham. The policeman was Bill Monks. Technical presentation by Jock Farrell, assisted by David Hitchinson. The director was Jane Morgan.